May is done, so here are all the games that I completed in May. May was Zombie Awareness Month, run by Cat's Novel Adventures, and I wanted to compete in a Zombiethon and get ready for a zombie apocalypse that if it ever happens, I am ready to go. And the very first game that I streamed, played, and finished was Lollipop Chainsaw. Lollipop Chainsaw is a hack and slash game that came out back in the day that I played a ton of. Got this day one, never sold my copy, and then just kept playing it. And it is Juliet, it's her birthday, and you find out that she needs to stop a zombie, like, horror guy who's emo, and you have to tell him to basically fuck off. And she has to work her way through and her family helps her and her boyfriend which is funny if you'll see he's right there on her hip he gets bitten so she cuts off his head and puts him on her hip to keep <laughs> which is weird and then has to find a body for him eventually but definitely a game to play it's funny uh it's got buffy the vampire slayer vibes it's also have a lot of old humor from back in the 90s definitely check it out i know they're remaking it so if you don't get this copy, because I know it's going up in price, definitely get the remake whenever it's dropping. After that, I finished a game that I started last month, the previous month, and that is Goblin Sword. This is a game that is a platformer with a little bit of hack and slash and RPG elements mixed together. This is a fantastic game. I don't know why I never played it earlier when it first dropped. It is you are a knight and you are given the task to stop the evil forces that are invading your land and dropping monsters onto your world and you basically only have like so many hits and think of like old games from nes it's a little bit hard but if you learn the patterns for each creature you can get it bosses are excellent bosses have patterns that are a little bit different each time but they're so good that you can know okay i gotta do this i gotta do a double jump i gotta hack here do this do that Definitely get this game. I know it's only digital only, but it's worth your time if you're a retro game person who wants a new game to play and you've played all the other games over and over again. This one will bring back the nostalgic feel to it. You won't be so bored with it. And it has so many elements of old games. The pixel art, the great graphics are from back in the day. You will have a fun time with this. I enjoyed this game so much that it's going to be on my top 10 list for next time whenever I make the list. It's going to be on there for sure. After that, I was looking in the store and I found this game for a couple bucks and it's a visual novel called Meta Dude. This game is a story driven game where you pick different elements to get through. Think of a comic book game meets uh, like a visual novel story driven game. It's a game that you can finish in one sitting and definitely for sure the puzzles are dirt easy. Like if you want an easy platinum, because I platinum the game because I was like, there's no way you're going to die. There's nothing that stops you. Just play this game. It's so easy to get through the puzzles. Literally, you just watch the percentage go up and then you finish the puzzle. It's that easy. So if you like comics, you like different styles, quirky, snarky, sarcastic characters, you're going to enjoy Meta Dude. He's a sarcastic asshole, and basically in a nutshell. You'll have fun with it, and it's got some old school vibes to it. Then I did another visual novel. This was also on sale. I think it was like $5 or $6, and it's called Arcade Spirits. This is basically a game where it's a visual novel meets an arcade with a little bit of, you can date, you have options to romance people. Um, basically, you don't have to do it if you don't want to. So if you just say, I don't want to romance, I just want to play the game, you can do that as well. You are a person who's down on their luck and gets a job at an arcade. And you meet different people who remind you of a lot of people in the community. There's an arcade guy who's trying to get the high score. There's a person who likes to rebuild cabinets and make old retro games new again. Uh, there's a cosplayer. There is a person who is basically an esports person. There is another person who is just trying to get through life and you have to like help your roommate and different things like that. I enjoyed Arcade Spirits. It kind of reminded me of another Arcade Paradise is another game that I played where you were, it was like a simulator and you had to run an arcade. 
the same thing. You have to stop things that are going on in your arcade, try to problem solve, and if you don't do something correct, it will tell you like, hey, you kind of messed up here, but it's building relationships and different things like that. So if you like that kind of thing, I recommend this. It's definitely a game to try out. I know there is a sequel. I don't know if I'll play it, but I definitely enjoyed the first one. After that, I finished another game that I streamed online, and this is a game that I've been anticipating playing for a long time because I've been wanting to get a remake of this, and that is Resident Evil 4. This game has been dropped different times throughout many consoles and when the remake happened I was so hoping that they didn't take out good big chunks of the game. Yes they did do that, it's a great remake, but I was kind of sad that they took out a major boss. I don't want to spoil it for people who have never played the original. There is a big boss in the game that is a little annoying. I will admit, but I definitely would have loved to see they reimagine that part and maybe make it less annoying. But still a great remake. You are playing as Leon and you are tasked with to find the president's daughter who has been kidnapped and taken to a village, remote village. You don't know exactly where, but you have to go find her. Uh, she is still annoying in this game, but not as bad as the original. Uh, you have Ada Wong, who is also kind of in the, like, the trenches. You never see her until she shows up and helps you randomly. I enjoyed the characters. I enjoyed the way they did this. It's in the RE engine and I had a good time with this. If you are debating about this, I know it goes on sale every now and then so if you're not sure, pick up the digital copy for like 30 bucks, play it, it's worth your time. I had a good time with this game. This also will be on my top 10 list, just don't know where. I'll have to wait and see because we're not done with the gear yet. Great game. Another game that I played for Zombiethon was a game that's called Rail Break. It's an online on rails arcade shooter. I don't see a physical copy of this either and basically you are going through a sequence of events and it's kind of like it reminds me of House of the Dead where you have multiple weapons you can play with and you pick up ammo and it kind of meets like a little bit of Resident Evil as well because you have things that like are plants that look like Resident Evil. You have spray cans that can give you health. I did enjoy this game. Uh, I will say there's a ton, a ton of, of DLC and I don't know why there's so many, but buy a bundle deal so you can get some DLC with it. But if you like House of the Dead, you like Resident Evil, you like on rail shooters, this is up your alley for sure. I recommend it. I had a fun time with it. I know a couple people like Chris James bought the game, said they enjoyed it. They DM'd me and they're like, very great game. Thank you for streaming it. So this is one that I recommend as well. Then I switched to a story-driven game. This is kind of like a walking simulator and it's called Nostalgic Train. This is a Japanese developer, so if you are not into reading Japanese on the signs, it might not be up your alley, but I enjoyed it. It's basically you are puzzle solving, trying to figure out different elements to open up parts of the story. And you're just walking through the town and you're noticing a story I'm not gonna, I can't even say any parts of it because it'll just spoil it, but basically you're a person who is remembering the past and you're trying to find different things and what happened in the town that you're in. It's a very small town. Um, you literally can probably finish this game in a couple hours. It took me a little bit of time because I got lost because um, it would say go somewhere and then I'm like, oh, wasn't that over here? Wasn't that over there? And I would take a wrong turn and get lost and have to like find my way back and then go through. But uh, think of like Dear Esther. I definitely recommend this game. It's right up your alley if you're into story-driven games. Then I played a game called Detail Detective. This is a puzzle game where it's kind of like find what's different in each picture. And so basically there's 50 levels. It's very simplistic. It's one game that it's kind of like, um, you know, the save room kind of game where you just do puzzles all the time. There's no story. There's nothing to it. Like each picture is different. There's no rhyme or reason. You just finish the puzzle for each level and then you're done. Um, I did platinum the game. It's another easy platinum. Literally you just beat, I don't know how many levels and then it's done. <laughs> like I was surprised that it didn't say like beat level 50, beat level this. Like Literally, it's just like you beat like the first, I think, 15 levels and then you get the platinum trophy. So if you want another easy platinum, this is going to be up your alley as well. Um, it's a 
game that I wouldn't recommend paying a lot of money for. Just get it when it's on sale for like five bucks or less and just play it and have fun with it. But another puzzle game I recommend. And the very last game that I played was called The Almost Gone. This is a puzzle game that I really recommend. It was on the PC and it's a game where you are trying to figure out the story and you're a young person who is working your way through the house that you once had back in the day. And I, it's kind of like got that vibe of like, you have to go back after and just get through and su shuffle through and get your stuff. And you have other people's stuff in there and it's kind of like an empty house. And so you go through and you'll have to look at each part of the house and then work your way and find the end, which is like a key to the end door. So you have to do a puzzle to get this thing open, to get that thing open, to get like the fridge open, to find the safe and the safe has the key to the door. And that's basically the gist of the game is, is you're going through and you're seeing the life unfold of the family and what happened to all the family members. Uh, I can't say anything at all because I'll spoil that as well, but the story is really good. Um, fun fact, it's on Netflix. It's a beta thing where you can play Netflix PC games and I was surprised by that. So if you have Netflix and you have a PC that's probably like an i5 or better, you can play any game that's on the list. And it was one of the ones that I tried and I played and had a good time with it. And there you have it everybody. I finished Zombiethon and beat nine games as well as watched zombie movies and zombie games. What was your May like? Did you have a fun time with it? What would you recommend from any of the games that you played or finished throughout that month? And let me know what was a game that you might want to check out if you saw it on my list. Would you say, ah, that game I probably would try. I do know that there's a couple people that uh, we're on the Zombiethon. So if you're checking out my video from Zombiethon, hey, how was your Zombiethon? Did you have a fun time with that? Thank you, Kat, again, for making a fun event for us for this month. And if you're leaving, give it a like before you roll out. If you're new, consider hitting the sub button before you leave, and I will catch you next time. I finished nine games, so I'm at 46 in total. So we'll see what next month brings. June will be a fun-filled month. So bye, everybody. Have a good one. the gamer gal she's here she's playing games linda the gamer gal she's here she's playing games too